Count me in when you're ready. <coughs> A very good evening, everybody. Uh, I know that um, I'm not exactly who you were expecting to see this evening, but we've had a few um, interesting <laughs> situations to deal with uh, this evening for Laddie MP6, this uh, uh, live tasting from the distillery. Um, our collection of brilliant talent has um, uh, had a few difficulties. Alan is in Glasgow. We always knew that was going to happen, but uh, most unfortunately, our head distiller, Adam Hannett, uh, has taken ill today uh, and is having to watch this uh, rather gingerly from his uh, bed uh, here in uh, Brookladdy. Uh, so hello, Adam. We hope you're feeling a little bit better than you were earlier today when I know that uh, things were very, very difficult indeed. I think this is perhaps one of the uh, risks associated with uh, having young families and um, uh, our very best wishes to you and also to Christy um, who has similarly been struck down um, with the dreaded Lurgy and uh, Christy too is having to watch this uh, from uh, the confines of her uh, house in, uh, in Port Ellen. <coughs> so hi Christy. But we've got a brilliant uh, team assembled for you this evening. Uh, we've got Sharon and Elsa and David and Chloe in the comms team here who are going to be fielding uh, your uh, questions, which we hope you will bombard uh, us with as the night uh, goes on. And brilliantly, uh, we have <laughs> stepping into the breach, somebody who many of you I'm sure will know, Miss Joanne Brown. Um, who is going to actually, you'll be glad to know, uh, conduct the tasting rather than my good self. And she's joined by Mr. James Brown of Octomore, uh, the, the, the legendary farmer from, from up the hill. Uh, so a very, very warm welcome to you guys. Thank you very much. So a few words about um, these MP tastings. This is the sixth. Um, as you know, this is an, a, a, a concept that we've developed over, over time. Uh, there have not always been uh, as smooth as we have, have liked. This is uh, a distillery on the outer edge of nowhere and um, <laughs> on the edge of the Atlantic and the internet connection has not always been uh, adequate, shall we say. And I know that a lot of you have been very patient with some of these uh, broadcast in the past. We hope that since we had, incredibly, we have had a, a fibre connection installed here, a high-speed fibre connection, that tonight uh, it will be the first time that we've actually genuinely been able to test that by uh, conducting one of these broadcasts around the world. So let's hope that all hangs together. As you know, these... Um, Laddie tastings are based around three casks which are specially selected by Adam. They are single casks and so there is a finite amount of liquid available. Um, they are unique in that uh, they're single cask bottlings if you like and um, so this really is a unique opportunity to examine a particular aspect of the distiller's craft. And uh, tonight we have Octomore, which uh, is obviously a, a hugely exciting moment. This is the first time that we've uh, uh, done an MP tasting with Octomore. And I'm now going to invite Joanne to pop the cork on the first uh, uh, <laughs> bottle and take us through uh, the liquid. Yeah, good. Thank, Thank you, you very Joanne. much. Thank you, Carl. No problem. Okay, uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. 
please be gentle with me. It's my very first MP6 tasting and I was uh, asked officially at about 11 o'clock this morning if I'd try and fill in Adam's boots, which are very big boots to fill. So we'll just crack open the drams, taste some whiskies, and, and try and have a good night together. But we do appreciate any questions, um, anything you want to find out. Uh, this is the time to do it. Any input you have or thoughts on the whiskey, that's what we love um, to read and hear from as well, from everybody out there. Um, I did see Adam today. Um, late this afternoon, he managed to drag himself into the distillery. Um, he looked pretty grey, but he had a fabulous haircut because he just had it done especially for this tasting last night. But unfortunately, couldn't be here to show off his haircut, so you're stuck with us mm -hmm. and Uncle James <laughs> with his lovely haircut too. So, what more could you ask for? Um, Carl briefly introduced me. Um, I'm a brand ambassador. Um, I normally get to travel around the world um, talking to people in whiskey festivals and bars and restaurants and shops um, and spreading the wonderful world of whiskey um, and Brooklady. And I always loved to come back to Isla and thought I would have a nice easy few days in Isla this week. It's beautiful weather outside. Um, I've been in the warehouse tasting whiskies and, um, and now I've ended up doing this. So <laughs> we'll see. Um, this is my Uncle James, um, better known as James Brown from Octomore Farm. And he's going to be with us through a couple of the drams we're tasting tonight. Um, do you want to introduce yourself and yes, say hello, a bit I more? Mean, I was just going to say my claim to fame is I'm Joanne's uncle. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm from Octomore Farm. We arrived there uh, in Octomore Farm in 1960 when I was eight. And we're quite far travelled. We came from two miles the other side of the village. <laughs> and when we went there in 1960, no electricity, the house is all pretty bad. Uh, change days now. But I got involved with the distillery when it was reopened in 2001 through various different things with uh, tractors and uh, telehandlers. But now uh, more with the barley and the water. But uh, really, I'm looking at an empty glass here, <laughs> and uh, I'm quite uncomfortable <laughs> looking at an empty glass. I get quite nervous when the glass is empty. That sounds good to me. Mm. I think I think we'll crack some whiskey open. Um, the first whiskey that we're going to taste tonight <coughs> um, is the Octomore. Um, it's cask number four eight one nine. It was distilled on the fifteenth of December, two thousand and ten and it's been aged for six years in fresh bourbon barrels. So we're starting nice and simple, classic Octomore. And the name Octomore, our whiskey, the namesake, yes. obviously comes from Octomore Farm, which the whiskey has been named after. And Octomore, as many of you will know, and maybe we have some novices um, throughout the world, it's known as the world's most heavily peated whiskey and that's down to the, the phenol content in the barley. Now, what's really interesting about this whiskey is it was distilled in 2010, and the batch of Octomore barley that we got from our friends in Beard's Maltings in Inverness, the phenol content of that barley was actually 90 parts per million, 90 ppm. And when a lot of people think of Octomore and they know what we've done with Octomore over the years, um, they're, they're thinking about us always increasing our PPM. It's getting bigger, it's getting bolder. Um, where in fact, over the years, the, the phenol content of the Octomore actually varies. And, and peat, it's, it's a natural substance. We, we generally take um, eight tonnes of peat, we burn it over five days, and then we test that barley for its phenol content. Sometimes it's around about 90, it's 100, it's 160, it's 170. Sometimes it's even gone above 300 parts per million. But we don't know what it's going to be until we've done it. And this is the very first time we've actually bottled and released a 2010 Octomore at 90 parts per million. In order to be called Octomore, it has to be above 80 parts per million. That's part of it. So please do have a taste. Slan de Cheers. Cheers. <coughs> so, 
So it's actually quite light on the nose, which is always mm. surprising for, for an Octoworm, what people think it's going to be. The, the smoke doesn't immediately come to the, the fore. It's, it's, it's quite almost like sweet hay. Um, you do get that, that caramel coming from the bourbon, American oak casks, the kind of soft fruits in there. This would cure Adam. This, this would cure Adam. This is, this is what Adam needs. Although yesterday I spent the afternoon in the warehouses with Adam and we tried a fair few large drams of whiskey. So I don't know if I believe this stomach bug malarkey or whether he's actually <laughs> <laughs> holed up in bed. Well, we'll see. Um, but we do. We wish you well, Adam. And yeah, please, please come back. Come back soon. <laughs> You're getting a lot of kind of crisp malt mm. barley in there. It's got a really lovely sweetness to it. Mm. It doesn't stay long on the palate. It kind of leaves a nice kind of freshness in your mouth when you're drinking it. And it just makes you want to go back, mm. go back for more. As is the case with these single cask micro provenance bottlings, it has been bottled at, at cask strength. Um, and this one in particular is 62.2%. And I don't know about you, but I think I'm getting too used to drinking stronger whiskies, so <laughs> <laughs> I don't necessarily <laughs> notice no. the strength straight away. I would never, never put water in that. There we go. No, there we go. I would spoil it. Okay. Unless it was spring water. Yes, yes. As Octomore spring water, <laughs> which Uncle James supplies to the distillery for the use in our bottling of our whiskies. It's not in here. Um, but uh, as you're drinking at home, Please feel free to, to, to tweet us or to um, put a comment on the feed. Are you adding water? Are you not adding water? It's a, it's a, it's a point that always divides people. Um, but you can maybe say a little bit more about the water that comes from, from Octomore that yes. we use and the connection. We started the water again in the early days, 2001. Uh, and my intention was just when the distillery got going, was to say, we've got really good water here. When you're selling a bottle of whiskey, why don't you sell a bottle of water with it? So you're, there's not putting any water in there, there's sort of chemicals or anything in it. And uh, not knowing that the water will be used to reduce the whiskey, and now for the gin as well. And the water that comes, that we have, it comes from a well, which when the village of Port Charlotte was built around 1824, the people that built the village, although there's a big burn runs through the village, it's a peaty burn, who knows what's in it. They discovered this water coming out of the ground from who knows where. Um, and uh, we started taking the water up to the distillery in barrels. And sometimes, um, now we get a phone call, they want 20 barrels to go away in the boat in the morning because there was no bottling hall here. <coughs> Excuse me, so I would have to go up at night and it's, uh, tell people it's haunted. <laughs> so you've got to be very brave and, and we also needed the money. <laughs> so we started filling barrels and then went on to filling the um, transit tanks which take a ton of water and again we've moved on from there we now fill a tanker that takes 10,000 litres of water and we can bring that up to the distillery two or th sometimes three times a week um, and in fact we're pumping water just now there we go so the water we use in the bottling hall, which is just across the courtyard from where we are now, where James's son Seamus, my cousin, works as well. So we like to keep it in the family, in the family business. And um, sometimes we bottle our whiskies at cask strength, where they've been taken straight out of the cask and put in the bottle. Um, but a lot of times we're using Octomore spring water to bring the whiskies down to our bottling strength of, of 50%. And of course, <coughs> we never chill filter. We never add any caramel. It's always natural mm. whiskey, and that that final part of the process, having Isla Spring Water, really kind of makes makes it what it is. And the whiskey's not ready until it's it's had that final final part of the journey. Um, we also use the spring water to make the the botanist gin. It's used for that. Um, do you have any idea how many liters of your water we use? We use a year. Uh, <laughs> Quick calculations. Yeah, wait, wait a we take 10,000 litres up, <coughs> say uh, 20 a week, 100,000 litres a year. And that's quite Possibly. impressive. Possibly. And do you think we'd ever run out? No. no. Just keep it going. No. No. no, no. It doesn't matter if it's a drought or it's a lots of rain, we still pump exactly the same speed. 
which is a thousand liters an hour because the water's coming through all the the rocks mm -hmm. and whatever, mm -hmm. picking up all these wonderful minerals. Um, we have we have guests here in in the the shop where we are. We have Team Greece over in the corner who, who are joining us for the tasting and have been doing production today. Um, we've got the, the some of the laddie team who've joined and have <laughs> empty empty glasses. They're motioning me with empty glasses. You'll get some whiskey. Uh, we also have South Africa. We have Canada. We have India. We have France represented. Uh, and of course, Octomore, no, no, not forgetting. And some of our guests who've just literally arrived off the plane um, from India, they'll be getting a tour um, tomorrow where they'll be going to the spring and, mm. and getting to, 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 to sample the spring water straight out the spring. And I never thought that water could taste good um, until I actually went to the spring and tried it. And yeah, it's, it's, it's good stuff. And it, and it helps make the whiskey good stuff. Um, but this whiskey, the, this mm. Octomore has no, no Octomore spring mm. water, although it is its namesake. Um, after trying it, after leaving it on my palate, after the, the finish coming through, it's, it's quite a dry smoke that you get from the Octomore. It's not oily in any way. It's not kind of that tar, that medicinal, that viscous um, medicinal note that you can sometimes get from a peated whiskey. And um, that's a lot to do with the distillation that we have at Brickladdy. Um, many of you'll know we have really tall, we have really slim necked spirit stills. Um, as the vapours are rising, it gets a lot of copper contact. And when I spoke to Adam briefly today, we were talking a bit about the, the, the distillation for the Octomore. And I'd kind of heard over the years, you do hear different things sometimes uh, from different people. <laughs> so we all try and find out what's actually happening. Um, but when we take our, I, I had thought that when we take our middle cup for um, Brugladi and for Port Charlotte, we generally take our middle cut after 30 minutes of the four shots. But for the Octomore, we actually leave it 40 minutes until we take our middle cut. And it means that we're kind of missing out of, of more of those heavy fusel oils notes that, that potentially could have come through. And when I checked this out with Adam early, he said that was, that was true um, before, but now actually we have the same middle cut for Brookladdy, Port Charlotte and Octomore. And that's actually 35 minutes. And he said that's because it, 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 it gives you an overall, a kind of best balance of the flavours in each of the whisky. And it also helps us to compare um, the different phenol levels exactly between Brookladdy, Port Charlotte and, and Octomore, which I, which I find quite interesting. Getting technical oh. for a second. Here comes the science. Mm. Um, so I hope you all enjoyed um, dram number one. Are there any comments or any questions or anything coming through on the, there's on the there's, line? There's loads of stuff coming yeah. through online. Lots mm -hmm. of people uh, watching uh, Joanne. And uh, the first question is probably one that, that, that it'd be difficult for you to comment on because it really is aimed at Adam. Um, which is from the Axis of Whiskey. Uh, they're saying, what's they're asking, what's the story behind the Reeve Salt and Ribera del Duero casks? Okay. Uh, but that's for the, the, the whiskies yeah, uh, the that are still that are to come, yes, of course. Yeah, we'll be talking a bit more about them So we'll them talk about them that, in, yeah. in a wee while. Yeah. And then we've got uh, Soren Krebs, uh, mm -hmm. who's... Uh, uh, a regular uh, mm -hmm. correspondent. Do you recognise that name? Yep. Yeah, absolutely. And Soren's asking, how do we get the high PPM levels to not overpower and dominate like others at a fraction mm. of the PPM? Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a very interesting question. Mm. And it's, 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 it's sometimes the enigma of Octomore. You know, it's, it's something really special. It, it does everything that it shouldn't do. Um, part of the reason um, could be because of the, the peat that we use. And this is something that we'd, we'd like to look at a lot more in depth because there's the sort of the, the interesting thing about peat is that if you cut it from different areas, um, you can get different flavours coming from the peat and getting infiltrated in, in, into the barley. Um, a lot of the Isla distilleries say it's because the peat's cut down close to the shore. They've got that seaweed that's um, decomposing and adding that kind of medicinal note to the peat that they use. 
Um, when we uh, use peat to malt our barley, because we work with Beards, Maltings and Inverness, mm -hmm. and they're up in the north, kind of middle, east-west of Scotland, um, they're taking their peat from up there, and that's different composition from the peat that we have on Isla. But there's actually a lot more research that I would, I would love to look into because in the past when we've worked with the, the, the botanists that pick our botanicals for the botanist gin, they were saying that peat is decomposed sphagnum moss, but it's actually the different kinds of sphagnum moss that give you the different flavours. But then you have other people that argue against this. So we're still trying to figure out what the right, <laughs> what the right answer is. I don't, know, I don't know if anybody knows. But you even have differences in, in the depth of peat that you, come, that you cut down to. Peat that comes from much further down tends to be darker and denser and almost richer, whereas at the top it's kind of lighter. And sometimes you get more smoke from that lighter top soil area. So there's so much to look into in the terroir of peat, but that could be uh, a contributing factor to the difference in the smoking flavour of our Octomore, is it? It's not that medicinal, it's not that heavy, heavy smoke. And then, of course, you have the distillation. And, and as I kind of mentioned a bit earlier, the really tall, slim neck stills, we have maximum copper contact for our spirit. The, the family of Brickladi whiskies, Brickladi, Port Charlotte, Octomore, they're known for having a light, floral, elegant character. That's the, 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 the style, the, the family of Brickladi is known for that. And that's even evident in the Octomore. It's because of these tall, slim neck stills, but it's also to do with the distillation, the slow distillation. We don't rush when we're distilling. We, we still have no computers on the production process. Everything's hand done and we, we trickle distill. Trickle is in very, very slowly. And uh, Jim McEwen in the past, um, he likened it to when you, when, you, when you put a pan of milk onto the hob and you turn the heat up high and when you're boiling it, everything comes over the top. And that can happen in the same with distillation. You ramp the heat up quickly, everything comes over the still quickly and you don't have that copper contact, you don't have that refinement. And some distilleries, that's their style, that's what they're looking for. Whereas us, we're just keeping it almost at a simmer so that the light vapours are going lightly up the inside of the still and over, and that's contributing to that light, elegant, elegant taste. We've got loads of questions coming good, in. Good, good, yeah, yeah, excellent. Know, in. Yeah. It's great, we've got the <laughs> Single Malt Alliance here, mm -hmm. uh, Jan, saying that they've noticed that Brookladdy uses the uh, cask descriptions fresh bourbon and fresh oak, mm -hmm. and they're assuming that fresh bourbon is the same as first fill. I would think so. Yeah, yes. Absolutely. Yeah. We we have a catalogue of of different cast types that we've used for Brickladdy in particular when we've been looking at the, the classic Laddie transparency where we've um, got some of the recipes there. Um, and sometimes we use the name of the wine producer <laughs> if we're using wine cast. Sometimes we use the name of the grape, sometimes we use the name of the region, and the same with the bourbon cast. Sometimes we write um, fresh bourbon casks, sometimes we write first fill. It also depends on who's actually writing into the, <laughs> into the it's system. It's that communications team, you know, they're not consistent, <laughs> that's the problem. <laughs> Work harder. <laughs> 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 but this one's fresh bourbon, yeah. which means it's uh, a bourbon cask that's come freshly from the United States of America. And we've put this lovely 2010 90 ppm Octomore into it. And then one more question from Romboot uh, Mastenbrook, mm -hmm. um, another great friend of ours. Can we explain how the phenols are absorbed into the malt and how it transfers from malt to whiskey through the wort? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I'll start from one stage. <laughs> no, how long have we got today? I'll get a black I'll get a blackboard out. <laughs> so um, basically when you when you when you're malting barley. Um, and there's two, two bits of it, and one bit I actually learned quite recently. Um, when, you're, when you're germinating the barley, you can leave the barley to germinate up to, up to five days, um, generally before you will dry your barley. We actually start to dry our barley after two and a half days, because we have five days of, of and it gets quite complicated, I don't know if I'm explaining it right, we have five days of burning the peat to, 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 to have the smoke drying the barley. And if we, if we germinated our barley 
for five days and then we dried it for five days, we actually use quite a, 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 a cold smoke because yeah. when the barley grain germinates, you have a shoot coming out the end. And when you start to apply heat to that, the, the, the end of the barley grain closes and the root falls off. And it means that the smoke would only be going to the outer casing of the barley. And um, we want that smoke to be going inside the barley. But if we started malting and drying the barley after five days, because it's such a cold smoke that we use, we want that barley grain to stay open for as long as possible so that the smoke actually goes inside the barley grain and gets in it the bits inside it, so you're the flour that's inside it. Um, we have a really cold smoke. But because it's so cold, it, it wouldn't necessarily stop the germination which would mean you'd lose your sugars. So we're actually a little bit unique in the fact that we start actually bringing smoke into the drying process early so that over that five days, you eventually stop the germination, but the smoke still goes deep inside the barley before, before, the, root, before the root comes off. And then, of course, <laughs> go, going, into the, going into the process, um, in the whiskey making process, you want to crush that barley grout down so you're getting in at the, the flour, you're getting in at the middle, you're getting in at those starches, um, so that when you add the hot water in the, the mashing stage, you're dissolving those sugars, you're dissolving that smoky flavour into the liquid, and that's what it, what it carries through. But interestingly enough, when I was on production the last time I was here, we had a batch of actually Port Charlotte, Isla Barley, and when you actually smelt the barley, it didn't smell smoky. And when you smelt the spirit, it hardly smelt like there was any smoke in it at all. And we were in the still house with, Adam, uh, with Alan, actually, Alan Logan, our production director. Um, and he was saying that actually sometimes the, the, the smoke and the peat, it's not always evident straight away. And actually it, it almost reveals itself longer stages in the cask. And this is something that they're still exploring and still seeing with the whiskies. So... There's a lot, a lot to see. Good. Good. Excellent. Well, I think we'll move on to, to, to dram number two now, because I think <laughs> Uncle James is getting thirsty again. Yeah, so yeah, so we may, may as well crack it open. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Which one? <laughs> no, <laughs> <laughs> um, so dram number two is, is another Octomore from 2010. So again, it's been made using malted barley peated to, to 90 parts per million. Um, it was distilled on the 2nd of the 12th, 2nd of December 2010. It's been bottled after six years. And this time it's been matured in a Reeve salt cask. And I'll explain a little bit about that once we have a wee try. Oh, different oh. colour. Uh, yes. So straight away, and you can see it from, from mm -hmm. the bottle, it's a, it's a much uh, darker colour than the first fresh bourbon cask matured Octomore that we had. Um, this is a second fill Reeve salt cask. Um, Reeve salt, um, it's a fortified wine coming from France. So it's, 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 it's French oak. And excuse me, I'm not particularly a wine expert, but I was Googling frantically this afternoon <laughs> and uh, <laughs> speaking to Adam about the, about the casks. And Reeve salts, it can be red or white uh, wine. In this case, it's been a, been a red wine cask that we've used. Um, to make this, this fortified wine, they actually add alcohol during the fermentation to stop the fermentation, which means that there is residual sugars left over, making it sweeter, actually. And Adam um, has often used these casks helping to kind of mimic the flavours that you get from sherry casks. And sometimes actually we've done blind tastings where we try and get people to pick out the sherry casks amongst the Reeve salt because actually it can give very, very similar flavours. It's, it's a bit richer. Please, please do have a try. Those, those here, Slandava. Right. Yeah, cheers, here we go. It's a really rich mm, oakiness to rich. it. Completely different <coughs> from number one. Mm. It's quite spicy. So you get more of the alcohol coming through, even though actually this one's less in strength. This one's 60.4% alcohol. 
you've got kind of sweet, sweet tobacco, almost like varnished wood in there. A little bit of fresh smoke in there. Again, the smoke, it's not so prevalent. It's not knocking you out mm -hmm. as some people expect Dr. Moore to do. It's like coffee. It's like that kind of caramelly notes in there. And much more of a viscous mouthfeel, this one. Um, you can feel the weight of the oils in it. Still very easy to drink. That's <laughs> 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 plenty more. <laughs> plenty more for that came from. Um, now, we've had really good weather the past mm. few days, and maybe you can tell us a bit more about the other thing that Octomore Farm does for Brickladdy. Yeah, the um, barley, yes. yes. Well, <coughs> excuse me, we started growing barley probably around 2006, seven, roughly. Uh, it's not easy. We've been doing it now. So far, we've managed to make it a success, but it, it's like, like farming, it's not all profit. Um, there's three, th with the things with that are quite against us is, uh, well, where we are, the type of land we have, we don't get a huge tonnage, but what we do get is, is quality when we get it. But we're also fighting, uh, one of our main things is the deer. The deer just love the barley, and there's more and more deer every year with us. And every time I see them in, I think, there goes another couple of glasses of whiskey. <laughs> you know, it's, uh, and then if we don't get the, the the barley harvested in September, the geese are coming back, and the geese are quite devastating in the crop as well. And the other thing is is the weather, getting the sun, uh, getting the crop down to the, the moisture content that we can uh, leave it down at Octofad for the for the distillery. That's also a gamble. Having said all that, we love doing it, and uh, it works well with the distillery. And, and I'm quite sure we're both winners at the end of the day because they're getting what they want, barley from the island, which is, um, it seems to be, it goes down well. Mm -hmm. And I think our barley is, is used uh -huh. also in Octomore, but it's not here tonight, um, unfortunately. <laughs> next but, uh, time. Next time, yeah. yeah. Nearly in tears. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, in the mainland, they're mm -hmm. getting three tonne to the acre, quite normal. We've still to reach two tonne. And we're doing our best. This year we're growing over just over 60 acres of barley. Our ambition is to get 100 ton. Uh, two years ago we got 99.6, just short. Uh, last year we weren't so good again, we were down maybe at 85. But this year we're hoping to get over 100. If we do, that'll be tremendous. And have you, have you planted yet? For yeah, we, you? we just finished three okay. days ago. So we're needing it to rain, and it's not raining. Mm -hmm. <laughs> rain for the barley, rain for the whiskey. Mm. You need it. You need it all. And that's quite special about the 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 Octomore Isla barleys, the 0.3 editions. We've had the 6.3, we've had the 7.3 uh, that have been released already, and we'll have the 8.3 coming later this year. Is it's 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 Octomore of Octomore. You have the the barley grown by James Brown and his family. It's been malted into Octomore barley, it's been distilled and matured on the island and then we bottle it sometimes using a teaspoon of Octomore spring water <laughs> um, to bring it down ever so slightly in, in, in strength. And we have, talking about peat and, 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 and phenols of different areas, we have experimented using peat that's been cut. Was it from your land? No, was it no, from it was, it was Octofad. I Octofad, think okay, so was. peat cut from Isla mm. and we experimented with, with using that for malting our barley to see if we could truly have Mm. like 100% Isla DNA um, and that's what we love to do we love to experiment and um, we couldn't quite get the high phenols that we needed over 80 ppm for it to be called Octomore so um, a lot more experimentation, experimentation mm. to be done into that and we do hope in the future to have our own maltings on site at Brickladdy um, so that we can malt the Isla barley on Isla and really utilise that Isla DNA, 100% Isla DNA. So that's something mm -hmm. to, to look forward to in, in no, the it's future. It's a, it's a huge thrill for us, mm -hmm. knowing that the, our barley and the water goes all over the world, 
not just you know, we're just really we're just sleepy farmers. <laughs> um, uh, so it's, and do you it's, drink whiskey yourself normally? Well, I don't rub it on. So, okay. yeah. <laughs> 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 Uncle James has a, a, a pretty amazing whiskey collection as well, actually. Off at, off at his house where he has filing cabinets mm. full of, of very special whiskies. I so. prefer to drink other people's. <laughs> <laughs> mm. <coughs> Don't we all? <laughs> so, so we've got a couple of, a couple of requests coming mm-hmm. in here, uh, Jan. Firstly, can, we, uh, can you yes. give a shout out to Jason <laughs> and the guys in uh, St Crispin's. Spins. I do. I have that on my list for shout out. Yes, which I yeah. had to write down so I remember. They can't, they can't, they so can't wait. They can't, can't wait. that long. So, uh, <laughs> no, we are, we are delighted that across the world we have um, brand ambassadors now in, in, in many markets across the world and they are um, normally out spreading the Brickladdy gospel but um, some of them have arranged special tastings tonight so they can watch online and follow the tasting. Uh, they were hoping to see Adam's handsome bearded face <laughs> But uh, unfortunately not, and I didn't manage to grow a beard in time. So, um, but we have Jason in, in in NYC in New York City with St Crispin's um, shoes, isn't it? Yes, it I right? think yes. I did Google them beforehand as well. Um, we also have Trent, who's in Berkeley, California, with the East Bay Spice Company. Um, I know we've got Abby in London, but I'm not exactly mm, sure no. where she is. And of course, last but not least, we have Richard Gillam in Singapore, oh. who um, normally does these tastings with about three tonnes of cheese. And I hear <laughs> tonight he's actually cling filmed the table so that he doesn't ruin it because <laughs> they made a bit of a mess of their fancy table last time. So a shout out to everyone out there that's organised tastings and, and has shared because some brand ambassadors only got one set of bottles. So they could have kept them for themselves, but they decided to share share the love uh, with the people in their market. So it's all good. And we actually had Caitlin actually in South Africa who was supposed to be doing something, but has ended up in a hospital, I think, from from what I saw on on, on our WhatsApp group chat. So I hope Caitlin feels better as well. Um, yeah, I know. We're, we're the, the last one standing. We've got the, the, the good blood, the brown jeans that keeps us looking young and, and feeling good. <laughs> and last but not least, we've got a request from Udo mm-hmm. in Germany, mm-hmm. who is asking, can he see the band of gold oh, in this well. second... I don't know because we don't have Octomore Spring Water with us tonight, oh, is it? I don't know if it'll work. Okay. I mean, yeah, I <laughs> so, <laughs> so the the band of gold, uh, which 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 some of you may have seen, a lot of you may may not have seen, is the 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 special trick that we do when we're when we're explaining to people about chill filtration in whiskey. So at Brickladdy, we never ever chill filter our whiskies. Um, it means that all the natural oils that come from the barley that are that are developed through um, fermentation intensified during distillation they remain in our whiskey and they give our whiskey a fantastic viscous texture so when you drink it it does coat and soothe your palate um, but they also carry these flavors and 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 really gives our whiskies though at that depth of flavor now I'll pour a bit more whiskey into my glass um, just to to make it clear but as we mentioned before don't be afraid to add add water to your whiskey. Some people don't like it at all in Optimores, no, no um, but some people do, and it's entirely mm. a matter of, of of personal choice. You know, we're mm. not we're not prescriptive. We don't insist you drink our whiskey one way or the other. Uh, we love you to experiment with your own palate because it is very personal. Um, always try a whiskey neat first, even though it might be at a strong strength, and you might see that strength and think, oh, that's going to blow my head off. The, the more you experiment with, with stronger whiskies in particular, the more used to it you'll become and, and, and trust your own judgment. Sometimes when you add a bit of water, it really helps to open out flavours in the whisky. And when you do do that, just some drops at a time and you immediately, when you add the water, you see these natural oils reacting with the water. Now, just for an experiment, it's not the way that we, we drink our whisky. Um, I'll put a bit out of this to make it easier. Um, if you add water slowly enough, and I don't know where to aim this, but I'll just do it in the middle, um, you can actually split the whiskey. And it normally works better with a thinner jug. I'll try the suspense. You can see those oils straight away. Mm. And if you add it slowly enough, which I'm kind of doing, you can actually split the whiskey. So can you see it? Yeah. Normally I hold up my iPhone torch at this point, but we've all got our phones on iPhone on aeroplane mode <laughs> so that we don't ruin the connection. 
but basically the natural oils, ju it's just like an oil slick on water. You know, the oils, they, they float to the top. You have the watery whiskey down mm. underneath. It's yeah. You see it? And when you dip your finger in, when you go just in the top layer, you get a drip that just stays on your finger because it's that viscosity, that oilness, that, that richness. And when you drink it, it's full of flavour. When you taste that, that oil, that band of gold, it's, it's, it's full of flavour. Now, there's lipstick on my glass. I don't know if this is your glass or, mm -hmm. or my glass. <laughs> Got dressed up for the occasion. Um, but it's really quite amazing to see that. And, you know, when I'm doing tastings and you do that, that trick, it, 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 it's pretty impressive. And it's, it's, I don't know how many of you want to pour that much water into your whiskies at home, <laughs> but uh, it's quite cool to see that, that we never chill filter and we never add any artificial colours. The beautiful colours of the whisky will only come from the casks that we mature in. And we've talked a little bit about the Reeve Salts casks that we have tonight. That's good. Good. Any other questions? No, good. we're in keep good shape at the moment. Keep going. Good. Well, I don't know whether we should bring up our second special yeah, guest. Sounds like a We plan. can maybe have, yeah. Are you ready? Are you ready? <laughs> thank you very much. So thank you, thank you. And yeah, you can come up at the end to say goodbye. Yeah, that would be good. You can move these out of the way. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Perfect. Please take Hello a seat. There, yes. Contestant number two, what's your name and where do you come from? Uh, <laughs> thank you. Am I a winner? <laughs> Hi, uh, my name is David Rochelle. So I'm from Calgary, Alberta, in Canada. Uh, where uh, privatization is what rules Alberta right now, and this is why we get such a great option and great opinions with scotches, uh, many whiskey clubs. Um, uh, nobody's wrong. It's like what Joanne said. It's just uh, there's no wrong way of drinking whiskey with or without the water. And I'm preferring to cast strength myself. Uh, Adam and myself, and, uh, and, and sometime later on in the day, Yesterday, we were uh, drinking a lot of cast strength items yesterday, mm -hmm. so I'm kind of surprised the alcohol didn't kill everything Adam and the has right now. Uh, I feel really good, uh, so I didn't catch it, which was good because we were sharing the glasses yesterday. Uh, I was kind of worried, kind of worried, but, uh, but no, uh, uh, great fans of Brook Lady. I've been here since the uh, very beginning, the very purchase of Brook Lady. Uh, so I've seen the growth of Brook Laddie's growth and, and the amount of people that are working here now are incredible. But uh, I, think, I think we're now up to 94. Wow. Yep, nine, 94 members of staff wow. at Brook Laddie now, which is, which is brilliant. Wow. Almost that 100, almost. Come and work for us, make that 100. Well, if you would have seen it when we first did, mm -hmm. uh, you would have just shaken your head and said, yeah. nah, this ain't going to work. But now, amazing. What an amazing place and an amazing staff level. Uh, everywhere I went, every staff knows their thing here. It's just amazing. I'm going, I just step back and watch and I'll take a glass. <laughs> Tell me about it. <laughs> Brilliant. Uh, but it's been, it's been a great experience here. Uh, yesterday, we had a great one with uh, the 1985. Yeah, we were, we were very fortunate. We almost didn't come out of the warehouse. It yeah. <laughs> <laughs> was just too good. <laughs> we almost locked ourselves in the warehouse with Adam, and he was, he was showing us a few special casks, a few, yes. a few sweeties, and uh, even some casks that we probably weren't supposed to open and try because we're not sure if they actually belong well, to us or not. we're not supposed to say so that. That's <laughs> know, a secret. So don't tell remember? anybody. I know. <laughs> Amazing whiskies. That's a secret. Mm -hmm. Well, we were lucky to have Adam for the whole day. Yes, yeah, we were. We were. I think we, I think we, we broke him. And that's why <laughs> he's not managed out today. Yeah, well, what so. a way to go. But you're, you've been on Isla since Wednesday morning. That is correct. Until tomorrow morning. Tomorrow morning, yeah. I'm gone back to, uh, back to uh, Heathrow and then back to Calgary. Mm -hmm. And then off again. Yeah, and back back to your store. Well, you see? we have one of the largest selections in Canada. And a lot of people right across Canada and across the world actually come to my store. And they're in awe in just the choices and the selections that we carry. And uh, what's really nice is that Joanne, and just like everybody else, comes to our store to do these master class tastings. Uh, the education is so important. Mm -hmm. Um, everybody's joining in, um, moms and dads. Well, moms and dads now bring in their 18-year-old children now 
problem is moms and dads have to pay for the 18 year olds <laughs> drinks uh, so it's a lot more fun now it's really educational we drink better but we drink less and that's what it really comes down to mm -hmm. yeah. yeah so so dave's always been a big supporter of Riccladi and um we're glad he decided to use some of his time when he was in scotland because he's been yes. touring about up at the the speyside whiskey festival and he, he saved the best till last to come to brickladdy always and um, we've just had a nice couple of days in the distillery out yeah. in the island and we're finishing it with the most amazing um, not a bad way to go tasting yeah exactly <laughs> and i think we'll crack open the final dram okay. um which is something very very unique um, very, very complex, mm -hmm. and of course, specially selected by our head distiller, Adam Hannett, who couldn't even face trying any whiskies this afternoon when I saw him. So um, yeah, we'll need to save him some so he can actually sample some more once he's, once he's well again. Um, but this particular Octomore, the, the first two Octomores came from the 2010 uh, vintage. Mm -hmm. This one here actually comes from 2003, so very, very early Octomore, um, and it's from cask 0022, it's been aged 13 years, and the label, which we can all see at home, it says Ribeiro del Duero slash bourbon casks, yes. but it's actually a little bit more complicated than this, and this is a whiskey for... Um, those guys that have followed Brucladi over the years, followed our releases over the years, because this whiskey actually started its life as something else. This was the original Octomore Orpheus, which was Octomore 2.2. And when we bottled the Orpheus, I, th I, c I can't quite remember, but I think there was only maybe 6,000 bottles of it yeah, um, okay. around about available at that time. And I think we released that in about 2008, 2009 maybe. And Orpheus was a very special whiskey um, because it was the first Octomore that we released that had been aced. So it spent five years in bourbon casks and then we put it into Chateau Petrus casks right. for, a, for a further maturation, additional cask enhancement as we call it at Brickladdy. And there were actually, there was a cask left over and Adam and Jim and the team continued maturing that cask and what they actually did was take it out of the Petrus casks, they put it into bourbon casks, Ribeiro del Duero Spanish wine casks, mm -hmm. then they vatted it back together and then put it into fresh bourbon casks and I don't know the exact timing on this mm -hmm. but it's been over the years until of course this was bottled um, this year as a 13 year old so it's a very complex, it's a very layered drab Maybe those that were lucky enough to try the Octomore or Orpheus can think back to their memories of the last time they tried it and seen if they could identify some of the flavours in there. Um, please, please do nose it and try it. Those that are here with, with the jam. Cheers, Slanch. Cheers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> quick, quick. <laughs> no. <laughs> Just do this, yeah. So immediately on the nose, it's totally different. And, and this Octomore actually started life, the, the phenol content was 144 parts per million. So it's, it's much higher than the ones um, that we tried, but you will have lost more PPM during mm. the maturation of the casks for the, for the, for the longer time. Ribeiro del Duero, um, again, I'm not a wine buff, maybe, maybe you are. <laughs> you can, <laughs> there we go. Uh, Dr. Google was telling me that uh, it's, um, it's, it's quite meaty, quite robust red wines from kind of the, the southish region of Spain, maybe somebody else knows. Um, and um, it's going to give you some fruits in there. It's going to give you a little bit of talons in, the, talons in there, tannins in there. Yeah. Um, but that will be balanced by the bourbon cask maturation as well. So it's, it's very rich, very powerful on the nose. There's lots of kind of slick flavours in there. It makes you want to, wants to have a drink. But it is very soft. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I took quite that a large gulp there without realizing full it. Full bodied, mm -hmm. but very soft, very clean. Yes. Hmm. It's a bit of, you get the smoke in there. It's kind of like stewed plums. You've got almost like yeah. tea. It's 
A slightly less strength. What 59 is it? 59.2. 59.2 percent. So natural cast strength, still pretty high. But again, even like the ones we've tried before, it's not biting the back of your throat. No. It's not over powering your senses it's very um, well balanced. it is and you can work your palate through all those flavors that are in there this one will actually make you slow down mm -hmm. because your nose keeps going back to it it's just so interesting now you you were lucky enough to try Octomore at almost the very at beginning. very beginning at so very beginning. maybe could, in comparison to this oh, what this. was your first experience with Octomore very well. Holy <laughs> hell, I said, this is burning me up. Yeah. Uh, the first one was so high in PP, it was crazy. Um, but it was something that was more of a challenge to mm. do than it was for Jim. That for anything, it was the challenge. Like, you can't make this. Mm. He did. And, and Adam's taking on so well on this. Mm -hmm. And th th the combination of both of them, they're dangerous. Mm -hmm. They're dangerous, and that's why this product is still continuing to be made. Exactly, and they're 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 over the years they've learnt the best way to work with the Octomore Spirit in terms of tweaking the distillation slightly, of 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 thinking about the casks that they're using for the maturation and 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 where they plan on taking the spirit in the future. And um, yeah. what's what's really exciting about this particular bottling, and this just shows you the the I mean they're all the the the, the bottlings that we've had of MP fees. MPs micro provenance tasting so far have been exceptional um, of Octomore that was distilled in 2003 mm -hmm. there are only two casks in the distillery remaining of that vintage there were three but of course we bottled one for this particular tasting and once it's gone it's gone that will be the 2002 vintage gone and you know we're, we're seeing Octomore now at slightly older ages than we've released before and you're yeah. kind of you're 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 just like we've done with the Port Charlottes in the past you're kind of watching the Octomores grow you're watching the Octomores change and you're watching how they're interacting with different casks in the distillery over the releases and of course different barley types as well when we've yeah. now got the Octomore Isla barley releases well and they're really evolving yeah they're evolving into a very special unique drink and this is what makes it so unique is is how different it is mm -hmm. and even at 59.2 i would not say it's that high yep not I at all i've I yeah say that. drank almost half of mine so far so well, <laughs> i'm quite i'm quite, quite happy yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, to top it. I did see there was a slightly different measure in what i gave you and what i gave myself so please do do help yourself so uh, shout out in fact this is the wrong glass from uh, asking, we got the Soho Whiskey Club. Hey, very good. Here they are. Is this with Abby or is this? And we've got. Ah, uh, oh, great. Yeah. great. Hi, George. And we've got uh, Mr. and Mrs. C in Edinburgh, Simon oh, and hey. Katrina. Sorry, sorry, who are they? Saying uh, great work, <laughs> Joanne. <laughs> great work, Joanne. Hey, Simon, how you doing? How are we doing? doing? And we've got yeah. Reed Petit. You missed him, though. Oh, I didn't. Yeah. I see he didn't put it through on the chat. Reed <laughs> saying hi, David. Hi, oh, my of course. Hi, yes. 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 How are we going? And Canada. we've got a request, if you wouldn't mind, Joanne, mm -hmm. uh, to, uh, would you mind just going over the cask maturation uh, of this last dram again, okay. if you wouldn't mind, because okay. a few folk didn't quite get it and okay. they're, they're really interested. Sorry, I, was, I was so excited to actually get in to taste it. I didn't, didn't make it clear. Um, so this whiskey was distilled in 2003. And the, the malted barley that we used uh, for this Optimore, the level that we got to was 140 parts per million. Um, that Optimore spirit then spent five years in American oak bourbon casks. Mm -hmm. And then we took it out the bourbon casks and we put it into Chateau Petrus, mm -hmm. um, French red wine cask, a very um, exceptional, end. yes, Premium. high end uh, French red wine cask from, from Chateau Petrus. And um, that particular, um, be, those particular casks were used um, as Octomore Orpheus, which was released in mm. about 2009, which was a very exciting dram. And that was the level it was taken to then. There was one cask left over of what we used for this Octomore Orpheus, mm. and it was continued to be matured in Bourbon and Ribeiro del Duero, Spanish red wine casks. Mm -hmm. And then it's been put back into Bourbon um, for fresh 
bourbon vanilla flavors on that. And how so they would have thought to do bourbon, that? Bourbon, Chateau Petrus, bourbon, Ribeiro del Duero, bourbon <laughs> is kind of the, yeah. the, the cask path for this particular Octomore, which I was actually drinking the wrong whiskey to begin with. <laughs> Got the right one now. <laughs> and um, <laughs> so amazing, full of water. <laughs> I know, so it's like, so um, yeah, I mean, when I smell it, I'm getting real kind of like, it's almost like banana. It's kind of banana, banana skins almost, I'm getting in there. Skins it's, so yeah, much. Yeah. So much. Lots of caramel, lots of kind of gingery spiciness yes. as well in, in the dram. And then you get that red fruit flavour in there too. Any other flavours that any other people are picking up coming through? Or? Barbecue notes, as the guy said here. Mm -hmm. it's, it's probably from the bourbon, I suppose. It's yeah. not many bourbon casts. But yeah, that's true. It. Yeah. Oaky, nutty, spicy. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Very good. Spooky. All enjoying it, I think. Someone, yeah. someone is standing and applauding. Oh wow! There you go. There we go. I gotta. Yeah, I think that applause is definitely for the the, the craftsmanship that's gone into this whiskey. And yeah. you know that's what it's about. You know, with the Octomore, yes. sometimes people think of Octomore as being quite one-dimensional. Yes. And in particular, people that really haven't explored the Octomore before, and they they hear of Octomore, they think of Octomore the gimmick. It's the world's most heavily peated whiskey, and yes, that is what it is. But, but it's right. so much more than that. And and the amount of, you know playing with it that we're doing at the distillery and and, and bringing out different flavors evolving it and and seeing it in different ages different guises different bottlings is 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 very very exciting because there's nothing like octomore no. there's there there was nothing like octomore done before yeah, it was right. made and um it's it's really exciting in that matter well there's so many different levels with optimores from the previous ones that I would actually, at the beginning, I would always put them into the, the cold weather drink. Mm. Well, this has turned into a summer drink. Yeah. Because the short finish, but the explosions in your mouth. Mm -hmm. uh, this is very fine. Yeah. This is very fine. And unfortunately not to be seen again, really, because this was the only cast we had of that particular recipe of Octomore. We were here. Who at the knows right time. if we've ever we'll ever be able to recreate it? Because why we probably wouldn't want to recreate it because it's something that mm -hmm. one off, that special thing, you know. And that's what Adam said when I was talking to him is, you know, he really for these micro provenance tastings, he wants to pick out the best of the best, and and you know we only bottle it in those two hundred ml bottles to kind of share the love as <laughs> as <laughs> far as far and wide as we can to give everybody a a taste of this. Um, particular one, it's this one here, and um, allow people to explore not just the Octomores but in the previous ones with the uh, with the the Port Charlotte's and and with the next one, which which the bottles went on sale today. I don't know if we've sold out That's or not right. yet. It, 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 two it, it, hours. Two, yeah. They sold out in two hours. Wow. Two hours. Yeah. yeah. Wow. And the I next MP seven tasting. Three Isla barley. There we go. Um, 2000 and, oh goodness me, right, 2011, 2008, and 2004. So we've got okay. a cask from the original planting by Raymond Stewart hey. at Kentraw. He was the first guy to actually plant. He beat James <gasps> uh, to, to plant barley, malting barley for Brookladdy back in 2004, which was a a great leap of faith. And then we've got um, another one of his from mm -hmm. 2008 from a different field on Sunderland Farm. Okay. And then the, the, I think it's a 2011 from, from memory, is actually a, a consolidation from 10 different farms on Isla, wow. uh, which will be really interesting, be really interesting. Cool. So um, that, what's the date of that one? Do we know a date That's yet? going to be, uh, the, the, the broadcast will be on Thursday, September the 21st. Well, hmm. so quite a while off. Quite a while Yeah, off. we've got to yeah. wait. Well, we do, we're trying to do three a year. Okay. We're trying to do three a mm -hmm. year, which is, you know, it doesn't overload everybody. You don't mm -hmm. want to kind of, but yeah, we're trying to do three a year. And yeah, mm. cool. Because it's, it's all go at the distillery at the moment um, because it, we're into the month of May. Mm -hmm. and, and many of you will know that the month of May means it's the whiskey festival at the end of the month. So... 
It's a particularly busy time where we've got all the contractors in from the island painting, cleaning, sorting out our distillery to make it look in tip-top condition for, for our festival, which is the 28th of May this year. And of course, we'll have live broadcasts going on, I think, we throughout the will. festival, so that... Well, we're going to do the masterclass, mm -hmm. and then we're going to do, we're going to make a program that's oh. the, and we're slight, slightly different this year. We're going mm -hmm. to try, we're going to record as much as we can of all the action that goes on around uh, the courtyard and in, in the mm -hmm. different marquees and things. And then we're going to yeah. make a program which we can share with with everybody. That's which nice. Yeah. Well, uh, so many people want to be here. You wouldn't believe yeah. it. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so many people want to travel with me. Uh, so uh, so throughout the day, what I've been doing is I've been taking photos of the Brooklady, the areas. Uh, the terroir of the area and 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 sending it back to my store which is uh, Willow Park Wines and Spirits and it's basically we're putting it on Facebook and everybody's been commenting wish we could be there mm -hmm. well, yeah. are you enjoying yourself are you coming back <laughs> no <laughs> but I have to um, but we've been having so much fun but Brook Lottie has been such an educational tool for everybody, because even in Calgary, in, in, in Alberta, um, my goodness, the, the amount of Brooklady that we've had over time mm -hmm. has been an incredible lineup. And I've been seeing behind me, uh, as soon as I walked into the shop, well, what don't I have? Mm -hmm. And there's so many. There's so many I don't yeah. have. Well, and that. then I've seen them go up in price too. Mm -hmm. uh, so I can imagine these three here are going to be gems. Yeah. Uh, how you're not going to open them, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's too late. It's too late. Too late. Though. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I, I think that's the exciting thing as well is, is over the years, and those of you that have been Laddie fans from, yeah. from the beginning, yeah. you saw our range when it was ginormous. You, yeah. You've stuck by us and you've seen our range reduce a bit again, but we're now at the stage where we are bringing out a few more exciting things yeah. and and these mp t tastings are are that as well because we were lucky enough to be in the warehouses yesterday and our warehouses are in the the best condition they've ever been in terms of the quality of the yeah. casks that we have there the variety of the casks that we have there and um you know the journey is only going to get better you know through these yeah. mp6 tastings through releases that we'll do in the future and there's there's a lot more to come i think Brilliant. yeah yeah so and we also saw the new warehouses yesterday, yeah. which I thought were just amazing. Wow. Laid out pro, it's just so well done. It's awesome, isn't it? Could have just left me there. <laughs> I, I, we did Picked find a leaker years. when we were there. We did, we did actually. Yeah, we had our, our jugs out <laughs> under the kitchen here. <laughs> wow, but Glasses. what an amazing warehouse. It's and the romance is back in that warehouse too. Yeah. Uh, the romance of having it all lying down and having it, it was just amazing going mm -hmm. in there. I, I, I was really spoiled. Yeah. It was really nice because uh, I was showed how proud you are of them. Cool. Any last questions, do you think? No, I, I think the really good. There's lots of... Um, there's a yeah. Mm -hmm. Great stuff. The warehouse, they're interesting to talk about. The, the extraordinary commitment uh, are, that we have to maturation on Isla, which mm -hmm. is what those mm -hmm. new Absolutely, warehouses yeah. represent, isn't it? it I mean, even, it's even, even today, when we're out walking about, the you know it's been beautiful weather the past couple of days. Yesterday was a bit, uh, there was less wind, but today the wind was up, and you know yeah. you can taste that saltiness on your face when you're walking down the street. The, the salt from the sea is is hitting your face. You can taste it, and you know that's the same salty sea air that's going through the distillery and Correct. through the warehouses and, and into the casks and you know at Brickladdy we're very much committed to producing natural whiskey, producing whiskey in the traditional way but also really utilising the island of Isla of course uh, not only in the people but the whole terroir, the farmers, the, the fields exactly and, right. and very importantly the, the air and, and we're breathing in that air every day and those casks are breathing in that air every day yeah. And, and that's what makes these whiskies special as well, because all our whiskies are always matured on Isla. Um, but it was getting to the stage that we're actually running out of space to yeah. mature our whiskey. And, and Simon, who's watching tonight, Simon Coffin, always said if we ever stopped, if we ever ran out of, of, of space in our warehouses, then we just have to stop producing whiskey because we're so committed to 
maturing and bottling all our whiskies yeah. on Isla all the time. And we're very lucky through Remy Quantro yes. that they recognise this and they recognise the investment that we need to do in our distillery to keep things the way we want to do them. And we've started a programme of, of, of building huge big warehouses, <laughs> building yeah, roads yeah. to get to these warehouses. Gorgeous warehouses. Uh, exactly, yeah. And, um, and it's a, it's a 10 year project yeah. where, where we're absolutely committed. It's long term. Um, and we're starting to fill those warehouses. And it's when we're there, we're hearing the wind rushing through them. We're seeing the leaks in the roof <laughs> <laughs> where the air is getting in. <laughs> and, uh, well, as of uh, yesterday, and I was mentioning that when I was here, how many actually farms were used then. Mm, and then yeah. use it, there's 17 yeah, farms now. Yeah, exactly. We started with one, and then it, you, you, when you knew us, we had four. And I now knew them as four. 17, now so. there's 17. Yep. And uh, wow, a big what a growth. But, but the enjoyment of people working on Isla and actually working for the distillery and supplying them with the supplies, it just makes it uh, so much prouder. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. We've got a, f a question here from Frank Jurger, who wants us, uh, who would like to know what the different types of barley are in these three dramas. But these are all Scottish. These are Scottish. Scottish name. barley. Yeah. Um, Adam didn't actually um, indicate yeah. the exact barley type, which I know we have had on some different MPs. Um, so I would imagine around about well, 2003, it probably would have been optic. Do you think? Mm -hmm. or? Yeah, uh, and I'm not sure for the 2010, but that's something we can ask Adam when he's when he's fit and well again, <laughs> and we can chase him for some answers uh, to that question. I think unless he's he's watching online and he wants to email us and <laughs> right. give us the answer. He I'm may be sure. answering that question. Yeah, it could be. It could be yeah. <laughs> I'm kind of suspicious though. He looked pretty good yesterday. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. That was the whiskey goggles, <laughs> Adam. <laughs> You're looking wonderful today. <laughs> Uh, we had a good time. We had yeah. an enjoyment time. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, definitely. But that's the good thing about Brook Laddie. And with Remy Quantro involved too, and, and the ownership, it's just, uh, it, 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 it so works hand in hand mm -hmm. that they're just, here you go, uh, make the best you can. Mm -hmm. And drink the best great. you can, which, Very is, well. which is even better. Cool. So I think we might wrap up things if we're yeah yeah I think we're, we're, we're in good shape every, here. everybody's had a taste of all the the three drams and questions have been asked and most of them have been answered yes so it's oh that's, that's very nice Aww. oh thank you good job. there we go yeah. so hopefully next time you tune into mp um <laughs> you won't you won't see our smiling faces here but we'll have <laughs> captain adam back in the driver's seat <laughs> <Sorry>. and uh, <laughs> And uh, leading you through, um, but it's been very nice to be here and 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 very honoured. Yeah, very honoured to chat through. and to Brilliant. get to try these whiskies because the last MP actually I've hardly been participating with any of the MP tasting, so I'm always on the road yeah. and always missing out on them. So it's actually nice to be here and at the distillery itself and and trying these amazing drums. Brilliant, well done, Jared. Pleasure's Jack. all mine. Brilliant. Thank you, and thank, thank you, Dave. Thank you, thank you.